Hello, I'm Anatoly Rupiev, Professor of International Business and Entrepreneurship at the College of Business Administration, Loyola Marymount University. I have been serving LMU since the early 1990s for almost three decades. With us today is Thomas Bilk, Vice President of International Operation at Stan Sport and Pacific Play Tents. Thomas completed his undergraduate study at the University of Pittsburgh in 2003. During his undergraduate years, he participated in the study work program at Yonsei University in Seoul, Korea, where he focused on international business strategy. He has been serving in various capacities and leadership roles in the consumer product industry at companies such as Columbia Sportswear, BCBG Max, Azria, Excel Outdoors, and currently at Stansport and Pacific Play Tents. After completing his executive MBA program at LMU in 2021, Thomas has taken on new responsibilities as a vice president of international operations at Stansport and Pacific Play Tents and he looks forward to applying his newly minted MBA degree, knowledge and skills to expanding and growing his company's global operations. Thomas, please share your views and experiences and educational insights with our viewers. Yeah, thank you so much, Anatoly. Uh, yeah, so a little bit about me. I, I grew up in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania suburb of Pittsburgh, actually. And I attended Pitt's uh, business administration program with a focus on business management. Uh, later on, I followed the international business path as a way to connect with my girlfriend's father and family. Uh, while I was studying in Korea, I learned about the differences between living in a small American town versus living in a large city. It was also during this time that I fell in love with international business strategy models uh, which helped me to visualize organizations in a new way. After graduation, I accepted a position in managing an office in Shanghai, China. Uh, this experience provided me the opportunity to visit apparel factories throughout Eastern China daily to ensure samples and production were made according to the customer's standards. Uh, after a few years, I moved back to the US and I worked for several apparel companies in various international production management roles which led me to travel to Central America and several US domestic factories. Eventually, I was introduced to senior management opportunities in the camping and children's product industry. Uh, these experiences helped me to develop an effective business relationship and, a, and lifelong friendships along the way. At this time, uh, Thomas, could you please comment on your company's global, global operations in the global competitiveness context? We live in a very different world. It may be also interesting to share with our viewers your assessment of the impact of COVID on your company's strategy, operation, business performance, and future. Yeah. Well, in a competitive context, our, our global operations are mostly import related with a little bit of export, but this always uh, presents an opportunity for sales expansion in export markets, which is something that, you know, after graduating from the executive MBA program at, at LMU, I was able to capitalize on. Uh, a large percentage of our products are made in places like China and India. However, we continue to import from other countries such as Korea, Taiwan, Vietnam, Pakistan, and even Canada and Mexico. Our large, our, our large sourcing network has really provided us an opportunity to develop partnerships with other suppliers and accept more opportunities from our existing customers. Uh, you know, because most most customers will will uh, will ask you to lower your prices at all times, and this this really helps us having such a, a large network. Uh, effective communication with the right suppliers has also played a major role in this growth and understanding how business is conducted uh, overseas provides us a competitive advantage over others in our market. Now, as far as COVID's concerned, uh, our, our strategy has changed drastically uh, due to COVID. Uh, in around uh, January, 2022, COVID 
shifted the focus of our company's strategy uh, from expansion into international markets to ensuring that we have products to sell. <laughs> you know, uh, a quick timeline that, that kind of affected us was uh, first we we heard about the country closures and you know it started off with sections of China and eventually that that made its way uh, into the, the entire part of China. So early on, uh, we decided that we were going to uh, do things like carry more inventory. So we started issuing a lot of orders because we could kind of see the writing on the wall. Uh, and then the port closure issues came in and that led to rising shipping costs uh, and rising trucking costs, uh, where we had to get very creative with, with uh, you know, really looking at where the costs are coming from and, and just finding ways where we could uh, combine shipments and, and be able to, to uh, keep our prices low so that our, our customers wouldn't uh, kick us out, for lack of Could a better you give word. some illustrations of the new costs and how you handle those compared to a traditional environment? Okay, so one, one of the, one of the uh, new costs that came, well, it wasn't necessarily a new cost, it was an increased cost. So where we were, uh, traditionally, we were, we were paying about $1,600 for a 40-foot container of goods from China over, over to our uh, port here in Long Beach. And uh, that increased uh, over time to $4,000 a container over a matter of one month. And eventually, one year later, it was close to $20,000 per container. That is steep. Yeah. So one of, one of the things that we, we had to do to counter that, be, because we have such a wide variety of products that we, that we sell, we sell a lot of things that are small and a lot of things that are large, we had to really balance out what we were going to put in every container so that our cost per unit could, could uh, come down to something reasonable that both us and our, and our customers could agree to. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's so many different things that that uh, that happened. But uh, you know, one one of the benefits that happened was that uh, was that that our our business because we're in camping, you know, the the closure of of a lot of uh, the hotels and the museums and things like that provided an opportunity for our industry. You know, and uh, one of those major opportunities was that a lot of people were going camping. You know, now that they're out there going camping, they want to buy more camping products. <laughs> so having that foresight to, to know that times are about to get pretty bad, that we better stock up on products really has helped us to fulfill a lot of the orders that our, that our uh, competition were not able to. So your proactive strategic position uh, enabled you to take advantage of the silver lining, so to speak. Yes, it, it, for at least for the time being, within these first two years, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the exposure to this to this uh, this uh, phenomenon that's going on right now at the courts uh, in the media has finally uh, let the consumers know about what's coming down the pipeline. Prices are gonna be increasing. Uh, store shelves are, are gonna be more scarce for a lot of these products. So we, we had to focus more on bringing in the quality products and less of the, the lower price point products because you know, in, in the future, we, we believe that, that people are gonna, if they're gonna spend more money, it's gonna be more of an investment. In, in the products that we sell and less of a, uh, I'm just gonna use it one or two times and then throw it away, less disposable. Are there any alternatives to ports and waterways uh, or your engagement in international business and ocean freight is the dominant one? Well, well initially, uh, initially, the port shipments were the cheapest way to go. Uh, Currently, we're, we're looking at other, other uh, balancing the, the different uh, options between like air freight and maybe consolidating shipments. Or e another thing that we've been doing was 
we we went from from warehousing a lot of our products to just having uh, free on board shipments, FOB shipments direct to our customers. So our customers would take care of all the all the freight at that point in time. Those those have really helped us out a lot. Okay, Thomas, you presented a very dynamic picture and expressed uh, reasonable optimism for your company's future and growth perspective despite continuing challenges in global business environment and global supply chain management. What lessons and takeaways could you offer to the young generation of students completing their business education and aspiring to become global entrepreneurs and captains of industry of tomorrow. Okay, so there's there's a few things here that I, I think is very crucial for for undergraduates. Uh, number one is that you they they should learn how to creatively communicate without being able to speak the foreign language. You know, and one of the reasons for that is because there's there's this idea that you have to learn the foreign language of the country that you're about to enter uh, but certain skills like learning learning how to draw uh, those those types of things will be able to help you a lot and also the the use of a lot of apps and social media where they can help you with the translations and things like that those are those are huge helps so definitely learn how to creatively communicate Speaking of foreign languages, are you proficient or in any other languages than English? Well, I, I speak a little bit of Chinese and, and a little bit of Korean, uh, and even less in Spanish. But yeah. like I was saying, a lot of the things that I've been able to do uh, are using are using uh, technology that's out there right now that you can get on your smartphone for free. Mm -hmm. uh, so. The, the second lesson I'd like to point out is that it's very important for you to build your global network. When you are about to enter a, uh, a foreign country, you wanna have as many friends as you, as you can uh, because it's important to have opinions from different people, from different backgrounds. You know, it, it'll be great if you have customers that are over there that you're talking to, but customers will limit some of the information that they share with you. It'll be great to have suppliers over there, but again, suppliers will limit the information they share with you. Everybody has their own agenda, so to speak, when it comes to business. Uh, but you want to have friends, you want to have a large global network that's going to be able to help you uh, navigate uh, this challenge. Now, the second thing, I, I mean, the third point that I'd like to point out is that you have to remember when you're in these places that you're a guest in somebody else's neighborhood. So the person who you might be talking to, uh, they, they may have grown up there their entire lives or they may not have. So all your assumptions kind of go out the window, but you have to still remember that the people who are there, they live there every day. So when, when you come in, you should always have a, uh, have an open mind for what they're talking about. You have to have an open mind for, for what you can learn from them. It kind of brings me on to the next point, which is before you enter a foreign country or even just an area, a particular area of a foreign country, it's always been helpful to me to learn about the local food, like what are they famous for or, or what the local history is, how, how that town or that city came to be. Uh, another point I'd like to, to uh, that's very helpful uh, is that you have to understand that you represent more than just yourself. When you go in there, people are going to look at you as being a representative of the company you work for or representing your family or representing your school. So when you are going out there, make sure that you're always putting your best self forward. And then the last point that I'd, I'd like to touch on is making sure that you embrace adversity. A lot of people, they, they're afraid to take, uh, take on the big challenges and things like that. But if you keep that, that old, uh, very, uh, if you keep that type of mindset, you're not gonna be able to grow. You're not gonna be able to build experiences 
And those challenges are, are where you can really be creative and you can shine and you can make some mistakes, you know, you can make calculated risks, but make sure that you, you take on those opportunities because they're really going to help you in the long run, especially whenever you're you're faced with a similar challenge in the future and people are looking to you for the answers. Thomas, on behalf of our viewers and the College of Business Administration, Loyola Marymount University, I would like to express our profound appreciation for your time, expertise, and inspiration. We wish you success in your growth and business accomplishments. Thanks and happy holidays to you and your family. Thank you and the same to you and yours.